Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP Pavilion X360 laptop. The specific variant for this one is an 14M-DH1001DX. That information can be found on the BIOS or on the bottom cover. It's really engraved on the bottom of the laptop. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can open it up and how you can add, remove, and what are the combination of the storage that you can have in here and what are the maximum capacity. I've seen many people call the, the I mean, HP call center and service center and they tell them that no maximum that you can go is 500 gig, maximum that you can go is like a one terabyte. I hear many things and we even call them to see if that's true and they do unfortunately give you a false information. I'm going to go over the stuff that the combination that you can have and the limits that you can have in your laptop. Just remember if you replace the main storage you have to install Windows freshly installed from the USB drive. I'll create a link how to create your Windows 10 or 11 USB boot drive. I'll make another link how to install Windows properly on your laptop, on your HP laptop without having any of those bloatware installed. Check those links in case you don't know how to install your Windows. In this video, we're just gonna do the upgrade, upgrade the storage. So first thing first, back up your files, power it off, flip it upside down, and we're gonna go over the tools that I'll be using and the tools, are linked in the video description in case you want to purchase yours. And I will leave the link for compatible storage that we have done it for our clients in past. So you can just choose. All right, tool number one, I fixed the screwdriver set as they have one of the best screwdrivers out there. I purchased this basic tool set. We're going to use a Phillips number zero and number one. And after this, you need an opening tool. If you get the pro set, they will give you opening tools and tweezers. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. These guitar picks are much, much better than any other opening tools just like this that they sell. This one have a really sharp corners. It's like, a, it's really, I don't like them. They can scratch easily, unlike the guitar pick, and they're really soft and they will not scratch. So grab this one. Uh, with this two on hand, we're gonna get it started. So, in the front of the laptop, you're gonna see two tiny screws. We're gonna remove these ones. These are Phillips number zero. So remove these two tiny screws. And then we have two hidden screws that are Phillips number one, are located on the back rubber legs. So you wanna put the opening to right underneath and you wanna peel it up like this a little bit and remove one screw right there and one screw on the other side. So. Oops, back there. So remove these screws. Now you're gonna use your opening tool and we know that the motherboard the stuff is in the back, battery is in the front. So we're gonna start from the front, the safest place. Let's take the guitar pick between the bottom cover, just jam it in there about one or two millimeter. I'm not sticking the whole thing in there. And then you just wanna peel it up like this. You wanna work your stuff all around in the front. You wanna hear those click sounds, that's normal. That's what you wanna hear. Work yourself on this side. And once you do the front and the side, you can just grab it from here and wiggle it around. If it's not budging up, because there's a clip in the middle that is not letting it go, then you wanna work yourself just like to the side and then it will just release the hook in the middle. Okay? All right, now we can put the bottom cover to one side. Let me flip this over and we can see it right away that there is a tray here for 2.5 inch mechanical drive or solid state drive, but they do not give you an adapter that goes from here to here. And instead they give you this to remove this one. You wanna put the guitar pick right down there. You wanna unhook it. Let me see, no, it hooks goes in there, so there. So if it goes in here, so I'm just trying to stick it right under this hook, jam it in there, and then peel it up, bring it up. So this is heavy because they put a weight in here. So if you open the screen, the screen doesn't fall, go back. So this weight compensates for the weight of the palm rest. You can remove this one. You can grab any SSD up to four terabyte SSDs, and you can put it in here and get a double-sided foam tape. It's and one millimeter and put it in here and stick your, where's my SSD? I don't know where I have, here I have one SSD right here. 
grab your SSD, put a double-sided tape, and put it right on top, and get a connector. I'll try to see if I can find a connector for these ones. They look something like this. Very much, you can just grab this adapter. It goes inside your SSD, just like that, and put it down, double side tape it in here. Well, if you don't even put it, you just make a noise, but just in prevent the noise, just put a double-sided tape. And you wanna grab this connector, and you wanna open up this latch right in here, 90 degree upward, like that. And you wanna stick this flex cable straight right in there while it's up. There we go. Let's take it stick it there and then close the latch right over. And you can tape this one over in here and just place it anywhere in here. You can they sell it the short ones, you can just hold it gently and put it on hub. You can put it up to four terabyte. This is a SATA connector, so two four terabyte SATA uh, SSD you can put in here, or you can put a mechanical drive. But I will not recommend mechanical drive in here. You have to. You can put up to two terabyte low profile mechanical drive in here. But again, you need a double sided adhesive in here for it to not move because mechanical drives are sensitive for movements. So put SSD drive if you want in here with a correct adapter. You can go up to four terabyte, but I will recommend two terabyte. Now the one that it comes with the board is one right here. I'm gonna lift it up. You don't need to disconnect the battery to do this. Absolutely not necessary. So this is like a shield for, I have no the tape here, so it's not even cooling it down. Don't know why, so I'm gonna peel it up for a second. Won't even need it. So they give you from the factory this 256 or 128 gig. Not even, a, it's an M.2 in PCI Express, but they give you a SATA, uh, M.2, which is much slower. So you can put an NVMe in here and it's gonna work fine. And we can test that theory in a second. To remove this one, we're gonna remove one screw at the back here. And the SSD will come out in 45 degree angle, just like that. All you wanna do, grab it and slide it back. You see the, in this SATA M.2, and they have a two notch on them, but the normal NVMEs, they have only one notch. You can put up to four terabyte NVMe in here, or you can put an, obviously it's compatible with M.2 SATA 2. So we're gonna test it actually before I even say more. I'm pretty sure. But there's a many variants of these models. So I'm gonna grab my M.2, is that 500 gig, one terabyte in Samsung. So we're gonna stick it right in here all the way in 45 degree angle, and we're gonna put that tiny screw right over. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my Windows installation. I'm gonna power it on and see if it does detect. So we have the NVMe in there. So let's go ahead and flip it over and grab my USB bootable. Put it in any of the USB port, power it on, I'm gonna press escape, and I'm gonna boot up to the F10. And I went to the BIOS actually. Maybe I can see it in the BIOS. Uh, I don't see the drive, but I'm gonna restart. And I'm gonna go to F9. You can go escape and then F9, or just go straight to F9, but I'll do Escape and then I'll do F9. I'm gonna choose my USB and then it's pulling up to the windows right now. So it's probably really reflective. I don't know if you guys can see it, but let me see. It's gonna start loading my process of the Windows installation. And in the third step, it's gonna show me that if I can see the drive, if I see the drive in there, that means this variant it does take uh, NVMe with no problem. Because this is a variant, is a DH1000 series, and I'm pretty sure they do take it. And there we go, they do take it, and there's why one terabyte NVMe, which is right there. So that means this M.2 NVMe PCI Express lane, and those things, they have no limits so of the high capacity, is like a terabyte you can put on that. So you can put up to four terabyte single side NVMe with no problem. So I'm gonna power it up, holding it down for a few seconds. 
So there's the question for people that oh, the manual says it doesn't take NVMe, and there you go. You can see it firsthand that they do take them. And if it's an NVMe slot, you can go up to four terabyte with no problem. Just make sure that your NVMe is single-sided chip. There should be no chips on the other side. Again, to remove it, remove one screw and slide it back. Again, remember the NVMe's are much faster than uh, SATA connectors. Grab it, bring it down in 45 degree inside the connector, put it down, and put the single screw right on top. I don't know why they sell you an Gen 5, I mean i 5 Gen, 3, Gen 10 uh, with a SATA M.2. That's kind of really nonsense. Uh, so you're gonna put this one over. And you're gonna grab the bottom cover. So if you have upgraded, so there you go. Put this one over, push the corners down, the back. Make sure you hear those nice big click sounds and in the middle too. And to finish it off, you just put the bottom screws under the rubber legs and in the front. Again, oh, I forgot to put this cover on, but this one just slides in there and goes in place. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish it off, putting up the bottom screws.